Oh no, why is it so blue? Um, on this very, very gloomy day, uh, which it's also it's been raining for like the whole week, um, I decided that I would uh, iron out my dirty laundry, no pun intended, and show you every sweater that I've frogged <laughs> since I started knitting. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I've spent a lot of hours knitting and then undoing knits simply because I didn't like the the fabric or how it was working up or I had made like some grave error somewhere uh, and it was just too much to complete the project. Um, I thought, honestly, I don't feel sad about any of these sweaters. I'm just glad I didn't end up wasting all of my time and all of my energy on something that I wasn't going to wear or something that wouldn't look good simply to complete it. And while uh, I might turn a blind eye on uh, small projects that... Uh, might not be the best and I'll just persevere and knit them. I don't do that with sweaters I feel like it's too much uh, too much of a commitment and uh, too much yarn being wasted So I just end up um, frogging them and reusing them which so far I've used up all of my yarn to uh, All of my like frogged sweater yarn in other projects. So that's really good. This is one of them. <laughs> this is the uh, Arbusto sweater. I keep calling it that because I don't know how to pronounce it So it, it sounds the best to call it Arbusto uh, and this is my Arbusto sweater, and this is the yarn that I frogged from my very first sweater that I ever knit, which is the Smoky Tobacco, and you can see this one here. The reason that I frogged this sweater is not that it was, like, badly knit or anything, but I was twisting my stitches, and I had no idea, and a kind lady on Ravelry pointed it out, and I was like, that is a thing? You could twist your stitches? <laughs> I couldn't, I didn't realize at all. But the thing is, what, apparently, well, at least in my experience, when you twist your stitches and when it, and when it's like a giant body of, of, of uh, like a sweater like that, like a lot of wool happening at once, the twisted stitches tend to like, like retract within themselves as opposed to like stretch out evenly. And they like keep, as, as it's, it's a heavy sweater, it keeps sagging. It also twists the whole garment. So if you've ever seen like a swatch, like a big swatch of knit stitches, they all lean to one side, I think it's to the left, uh, which is what was happening with that particular sweater. It really didn't look good. It was starting to like sag in certain places. And I, I just thought, I don't like how this is looking and I probably won't wear it if it's like that. So I ended up scrapping it. I really also liked the color of the yarn, so I did want to reuse it for something else, which ended up being this sweater. And this one has hold up real nicely so far and I'm really happy with that. So yeah, the smoked tobacco, or the Samarella, uh, which I ended up naming smoked tobacco, is the 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 only com fully completed sweater that I've uh, worn and then frogged. Uh, and and yeah, don't feel sad about frogging it at all. I'm really happy that I ended up using the yarn for something else like this. So yeah, uh, sorry, I had to answer some messages. Um, the other sweater, which is the most recent one, because I'm, I'm, that's how I'm looking at them in Ravelry, the way I've logged them. Uh, is actually <laughs> this one here. So, embarrassingly, the whole idea of this sweater started because I discovered what a pico edge is. And I was like, <laughs> I need to have a whole sweater based on the concept of a pico edge. And I bought the yarn and I d due diligently started measuring out like some sort of uh, sort of loose boxy top that I want to that I want to incorporate the pico edge in and while the pico edge itself let me see if I can focus on it while the pico edge itself is looking kind of nice uh the choice of yarn is not the best uh it's kind of thick uh this was meant to be sort of like a transitional garment like something for the spring something for like the colder beginnings of summer I don't know what this is here, some scrap. Um, and and it ended up looking goofy. Like, look at how it's turning on the back. Maybe this is just like a user error. Like, I didn't, I didn't make this sweater all too nicely. So the way that I started the sweater is I, I believe I cast it on, yeah, I cast it on somewhere here, which is like somewhere just, just as your back is starting, somewhere around here. And then I knit, uh, I knit like a shaping element for the shoulders, and then the front a little bit, and then I continued knitting the back, uh, and and I I joined them in the round just beneath where where the sleeve would end, uh, and. While I think I did a pretty okay job with this, uh, this was by the way knitted way more before I, I removed it, started removing it completely. I feel like I even started working on the bottom hem. Um, the reason I didn't like how this was working up is 
one because the two yarns are not the same like at all um the the white yarn or the like the white off-white yarn color is uh 50 percent merino like it's a baby yarn so it's like really soft it's really pleasant 50 percent merino 50 percent acrylic i think and the other yarn is uh, microfiber so it's basically some sort of polyester blend or or is a polyester yarn and while it looks fine and it makes this like really pretty um, fade it's a different type of yarn altogether it was really unpleasant to knit with I really didn't like it uh, I didn't like how it was working up I didn't like how much you could see my like uh, mistakes on the stitches and and overall it was just at some point I was just really unhappy with how I was looking up, uh, working up, um, mostly because of the, the, the neckline, I feel like. The neckline was one of the biggest things, but then also, like, I don't know, it was a, like a, a really bad attempt at, at designing my own thing, and maybe, maybe I didn't think it through, maybe it was one of the reasons was I really wanted to knit something, and it was, like, April, uh, or maybe July even, I feel like I bought this with, like, money that I got for my, for my birthday in, in summer, and I didn't like where this was going at all. Uh, I felt very excited knitting on it, and then at one point it just tapered off, and I was like, wow, I really am not happy with how this is this is going. So yeah, uh, it's still in the process of being frogged. Uh, I haven't really uh, gone through it completely. Uh, kind of gave up halfway or, or, or something. Um, the only thing that I'm okay with, or rather happy with, is that this white yarn is pretty nice on its own. Uh, maybe held double with another uh, alpaca, uh, brushed alpaca is going to look really good. I also have other colors of this yarn because I wanted to, initially before buying the whites, I had all kinds of like small single skeins, single balls of this yarn. Uh, and they're pretty fun. Uh, I might make something stripey again, but with only it, um, without adding any other content. Uh, but about the microfiber thing, um, it's, it's pretty meh <laughs> in terms of knitting a sweater with. But it's actually really, really good for scrap yarn when knitting socks. I'm actually using some of it here. I have it in my little, um, little helpful tin where I keep my stitch. Is it gonna focus on it? No, I'm not seeing it. So I'm just using using up all of these um, uh, unraveled bits as scrap for my afterthought heels, and it works great because this does not stick to any of the other yarns that I, I put in between. So at least I'm going to be using it for that, at the very least. Uh, maybe I can, because it is quite a lot, maybe I can also help hold a double with something else if I ever intend to knit like a, like a scrappy project, like a pillowcase or something like that. Uh, so there's at least that. I feel kind of bad that I had purchased that yarn. It wasn't too expensive, but it's like, it was like three skeins of it. Uh, and it's, it's not the yarn that I'm looking for. I think it was the last... Uh, sort of uh, synthetic yarn that I purchased and I wasn't really happy with it so yeah I learned my lesson there so that is this one um, again my own pattern didn't follow anything maybe that was my demise as well that's why it's frogged <laughs> um, the next sweater that I can show you is this one here so this was uh, supposed to be maybe my first cardigan I'm not sure it's based on petite knits no frill sweater uh, so I basically knit that, however, I, I instead of knitting it in the round, I just stopped and knitted back and forth to create a cardigan. And while this cardigan is actually pretty smart, it's pretty cute, has bubbles. These are, this is prior to me knitting this sweater, but I really wanted something with bubbles. Uh, while it's like all fine and whatnot, I don't like this color. I don't like that you can see like, I don't know if you can on camera, but my stitches are not even, it doesn't look too good. Even though this is 100% uh, Superwash Merino, I, I'm not enjoying knitting with it all too much. And I showed you in the previous video that I have plans for this to be unraveled. All the yarn that I have here, I'm going to combine with uh, uh, this uh, this brushed alpaca by Drops. And it actually makes for a really pretty um, uh, texture and fabric, uh, slightly more um, light. And not so glum because I don't know if you can tell this is supposed to be like a very dusty pink it doesn't work, look well on me it, it needs to be a little bit brighter or a little bit darker this is just too close to the the shade of my skin and it just kind of washes me out um so so yeah uh unsuccessful but not too bad no, don't feel too bad about it I honestly don't I learned a bunch from uh knitting like a, like a, like, a, like a strange cardigan like that but uh I don't feel too bad about it. I'm just gonna 
one of these days and uh, roll up the, the bowls that I've used here. And uh, this is just going to remain in my to-do pile. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, honestly. I'm not, uh, not feeling too bad. I already have uh, a lot of these skeins that I've... Uh, accumulated through sales. <laughs> I only buy like a few of them at a time, but uh, now I have like a decent amount to be enough to make a whole sweater. So yeah, that's that. Um, the other <laughs> the other sweaters, two of them actually, if not three after, uh, now that I think about it, I've attempted to knit the Birkin I think at least three times and all of them were unsuccessful. The first time I used this uh, rusty red color yarn that is now a cardigan, um, and at the time I was also twisting my stitches, so that didn't pan out very well. Um, but that card again, uh, th that attempt of the Borkin, because of the twisted stitches and uh, me learning of them at the time, I was like, wow, this is ruined. <laughs> I can't do anything with this anymore. So I did unravel it pretty quickly. I hadn't gone too far in, I only completed like the white bit of the leaves and uh, didn't, didn't even go to the flowers. Uh, the second time that I th the Birkin is um, the time that I realized that you actually want your yarn to be kind of toothy to hold when you're knitting color work. If you don't, if you knit it with like something like super wash merino, if it's like super slippery, it just doesn't end up looking too good. Um, my bad, <laughs> I didn't know, but that's kind of how you learn. Um, and the white yarn that from the second attempt of the Birkin is going to become my uh, well, it is already. It's it's quite quite. Um, Quite far ahead in knitting this cardigan. I have a sleeve now. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Uh, I have a sleeve now. Uh, this is held double with the same uh, brushed alpaca silk. Uh, it's super incredibly snuggly. It makes for a really pretty color. I really enjoy how it looks slightly marled. Um, and yeah, this is uh, this is the cardigan that's uh, repurposing that yarn. I'm really excited to finish it. I'm working on the second sleeve here and I just need the button black and it's done. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the second Birkin, which is, I knit through almost like more than half of the, of the color work on that sweater, and it just, it didn't look good, it was puckering, and even though puckering can get, um, blocked out, and it, it rests and it becomes much nicer, it didn't look nice, and it didn't feel nice making it. I realized that I really don't like holding three yarns at the same time. Um, and the final um, sweater, which is also the first sweater I ever attempted, is another colorwork sweater that was called, that's called uh, Fern and Feather. Um, and, and yeah, I made a horrible decision with the yarn. I made a horrible decision with the size of the needles. I did not calculate for anything. I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, it ended up being frogged. Um, it, it's for the better, really. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's the last sweater that I've um, listed here, and the only one that I haven't, and I don't know why I haven't listed it on Ravelry. Maybe because I was super uncertain if this is gonna go anywhere. Is uh, I don't know if you know them. There's these um, mohair, really big, really chunky, poofy sweaters that have like a a scenery on them, like a cottage and some sheep. <laughs> some flowers or whatever, an apple tree in the distance, and it's Antarja, and it's, I'm so in love with Antarja, but I'm also so impatient with it, and I don't like the process, but I've decided that I wanted to make myself an Antarja sweater, and hopefully I'll have some pictures to insert of it, because I don't have it anywhere here anymore, I unraveled the whole thing. I had started on the front panel of a sweater that I made myself, I designed myself, with uh, the scenery of like a very cheesy, a countryside with some sheep in a house and everything like that. Don't, don't question me, I don't know why I did all of that. But uh, that was the the first and last unsuccessful sweater project in Intarja that I've tried. And for now, I think I'm not even going to think about Intarja. I'm just going to look at people's projects and I'm going to be like, that's amazing, I'm so happy for you, but I can't do it. So that is the, the sweater that I didn't end up completing even barely, like, it was just a panel, it was just a front panel and nothing else, and even though I was so excited for it, I was, at one point, I think, juggling maybe 12 singular uh, little skeins, little, little, um, how you call them, I don't know, I had just wound up little tiny bits of each part of the sweater as it repeats, and they're like, uh, like you start off yellow, there's a little bit of white, you switch to the white, and there's a little bit of yellow again, and then you switch to a little bit of gray, and it's a nightmare, I didn't, 
I can't express enough how, how unfortunate my uh, intarsia attempts have been. Um, so yeah, I think those are all of them, honestly. This is kind of a short video, um, but I wanted to, um, I wanted to record it. I wanted to show you that it's fine, honestly. All of this is fine. It's fine if you waste a bit of time on um, trying out um, a sweater pattern you may not like in the end. Um, it's fine if you buy some yarn and and it doesn't end up working out the way you intended it to in your sweater knits. It's fine. You'll you'll repurpose it. Honestly, I've I've pretty much uh, repurposed the older ones, and now I'm repurposing the newer ones. And maybe in the future I will frog something else. I might frog this, although I don't wanna. <laughs> I might I might frog another sweater that I attempt. Um, it's it's perfectly fine. I've learned a lot of all of from all of these frog sweaters, and um, I intend to carry that with me. That's kind of the main point here. I feel super confident um, in my knitting now. Uh, than in than like two years ago when I was making some of these and I was kind of lost in what to do with them and now I'm like I want to say I have a bit more intuition even in, in in like choosing fabric and combining them together and every single one of these failed projects has helped me greatly <laughs> so if you're feeling like something you've knit up halfway or a third of the way is just not working out you like can't stand the thought of this sweater just undo it honestly just Pull it, make that nice, like, sort of, like, ripping noise <laughs> that it makes. That's why it's a frogging sweater. Uh, like a frogging um, sound. Uh, and, and just try something new. It doesn't, it doesn't need, not every sweater needs to be completely finished before you realize it doesn't work out. So, yeah, um, I hope. I hope this is a sort of like a motivation for you to either complete your sweaters or to just unravel them. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> And yeah, I'm gonna leave you with that. I am gonna make myself something to eat. Maybe have a second coffee, although it's kind of late, maybe just a tea. And I will resume knitting my cardigan. I am super excited to finish it and wear it while it's still cold. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video with uh, maybe some questions. I have a lot of Q and A's that I've uh, saved up from uh, an Instagram post. And I want to gather more information on some of them uh, and I want to present a lot of my findings and make it more entertaining. So I will probably do that next. Maybe hopefully tomorrow if it's good weather. And um, yeah, talk to you soon. Bye!